What is going on guys? It's Boy coming to you once again with some 3D anatomy action courtesy of anatomylearning.com. Please support them by visiting their website linked in the description box below. And today we're going to be talking about the deep posterior muscles of the pelvis. The deep posterior muscles of the pelvis. Honestly, the most challenging part of learning these muscles is learning their names. They all have the same basic function, which is lateral rotation. They all insert at the same marker, the greater trochanter of the femur. And for the most part, they all originate at the pelvis, which, with the exception of one, which actually originates at the sacrum, as you can see. So here. first we're going to go over the names of these six muscles, then we'll discuss briefly strategies you might be able to use to sort of memorize them. Alrighty, so the six muscles of the posterior deep pelvis are the piriformis, the gemellus superior, the obturator internus this is the obturator internus too the gemellus inferior the quadratus femoris and finally the obturator externus the obturator externus runs all the way through now, there. the first thing you'll probably notice is that the piriformis is the only one that's actually connected to the sacrum instead of the pelvis. It runs through the greater sciatic notch inferior to the posterior inferior iliac spine here and runs in between that spine and the ischial spine. Meanwhile, the gemellus superior that's the one actually connects to the ischial spine now the ones you'll probably have the best time remembering are going to be the obturators the obturator internus and the obturator externus pretty pretty easy to figure out why they're named thus they are pretty much slap on the obturator foramen the internus covers the internal side, the externus covers the external side, and they both wrap around and attach to the greater trochanter of the femur. And then inferior, in between those really, are the gemellus inferior and then the quadratus femoris, both attached to the Ischia. So my best advice for memorizing these muscles is actually to use a mnemonic. And when it comes to mnemonics, the funnier, unique, or more memorable, the better. Um, I love mnemonics. I have a ton. Some of them are appropriate. Some of them are a little more risque. A family-friendly one that I have for this group of muscles is uh, passing gas on stage gets quiet onlookers so passing gas on stage gets quiet onlookers sort of how you feel in that sort of embarrassing situation like all eyes are on you but it can be anything really um what's most important is that you actually sit down and you think of a mnemonic yourself because what that does is it gets you to think about these words more deeply, even if you haven't heard them before. So the most important thing to note about where these muscles are connected is that they all share a common point of insertion at the greater trochanter. Remember, I might have said before that the greater trochanter is a super important bone marking. And as you saw in the last video, it is the point of insertion for the gluteus medius and minimus, and now it's the point of insertion for the six other deep gluteal muscles. Now, as we've seen before, by looking at where this point of insertion is relative to the point of origin, we can sort of guess what type of movement these muscles elicit. So if you can just imagine each of these muscles contracting and pulling on this greater trochanter what what type of movement does that seem to create well it sort of pulls the greater trochanter back and it sort of 
rotates. It rotates. If you can sort of imagine that, it rotates the femur outward, laterally. It rotates the toes this way if you keep your leg straight outwards from the body. And that's called lateral rotation. That's the primary function of each of these muscles, lateral rotation. And you can also imagine a sort of secondary function of these muscles. The way they sort of pull the the head of the femur towards the body, it, they actually stabilize this hip joint. They stabilize it. They prevent it from falling out of its socket. Well, let's say that we have the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus um, up here. And we remember that it they sort of come down and they attach to the greater trochanter and they cause it to abduct. Well, these muscles, at least these four, kind of uh, kind of have similar attachment. Not so much uh, the quadratus femoris and the obturator externus, but the top four sort of have a similar sort of attachment scheme as the gluteus max, the gluteus minimus, and the gluteus medius. So it's, it stands to reason a little bit that it also has a sim some slightly similar movement. That movement being abduction. It's not a major function like it is for the gluteal muscles, the medius and minimus, but it is, it is there. There is some abduction going on there. Nevertheless, the primary functions of all of these muscles are a lateral rotation and B stabilization of the hip. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So we have completed the muscles of the deep, deep posterior pelvis. Next video, we're going to tackle the muscles of the anterior or front of the pelvis. Looking forward to that. Great job, guys, and I'll see you later.